Hey YouTubers, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am the Taylorette, a historical costumer and creative sewist. And today I will be talking about how to read a pattern. Now I will be going over a basic commercial pattern. There are several different patterns out there that historical costumers have made and they all have their own style of how they write a pattern. I will be going over the basic commercial pattern of what you would find at your local fabric or craft store. Okay, so I am going to start with this basic pattern here. Well, not basic, it's not easy, but um, this Frederick pattern, and when you buy a pattern from the store, it'll come in a packet like this, and it'll have your paper pieces here. These are the instructions of how to cut and everything, and then it'll have your pattern pieces right here. And so first of all, before we start taking all of that stuff out, I'm gonna show you how to read the back of a pattern when you're at the store. Okay, so when you're at the store, this is what it's going to look like. You're gonna have this size chart up here. You're gonna have all these words which could look like gibberish to you. First of all, you have the dress. This is the front of the dress and the back of the dress. It's just a sketch just to show you where the seams are and the basic idea, how there's princess seams in the back and you have a middle seam in the front here and the sleeves and everything. Coming up here, you're going to look at your size. So you're going to measure yourself and say you have a 34 inch bust. So here it says the bust. Here's 34. That means your size 12. However, don't be deceived because patterns are actually made a little bit larger. Okay, finished garment measurements. So you'll see here it says bust and it says that it goes from 33 and a half to 47. So that means that your size 6 probably finished is 33 and a half. So I would say 34. I'm pretty sure I made a 34 in a size 10 and it worked out really well. So don't be deceived. You definitely want to do a mock-up or something just to make sure it fits. But I did a size 10 for the 34 and then sized it down. So it looks like in this pattern, it says remaining measurements included on pattern tissue. So that means it would be on the inside. The other finished garment measurements would be on the tissue paper. So this is your yardage, these numbers here. So this will say, see how this says 60 right there? That means 60 inch wide fabric. So you're gonna buy a fabric that's 60 inches wide and you're gonna wanna buy six yards of it. So, and then there's, looks like there's a contrast fabric that they want you to get, which the contrast, not quite sure what the contrast is. I don't see any contrast fabric, so that's good. Anyways, they would have you do for a contrast fabric if you want to do that. They want you to get a yard and an eighth. And it looks like they do a lining. You need a lining, so you're gonna get two and seven eighths yard lining. If you go down here to look at what kind of fabric, it'll show you, okay, for your main fabric, you're gonna want a wall, a lawn, or a lightweight cotton. So this is a lightweight cotton dress and the contrast fabric, they ask you to get a silk or a satin and they tell you for lining, it's cotton, muslin. There's all that information there. And here's your notions of what it will say. So you need boning. So they'll say one and one fourth yards of one fourth inch wide boning. And it gives all of the details of what you need for buttons, twill tape, all that stuff. And up here is just a basic description of what the dress is and then that size in a different language. So I won't go over that. Okay, so now we are officially ready to take these pieces out. I'm just gonna take everything out. So here's your tissue pieces. These are your pattern pieces. And then here is your, these are your instructions. So let's go over these instructions first because you wanna read these before you even open up these tissue pieces. So let's open up these papers. Okay, so the first thing you wanna to go to is you're gonna see something like this with a picture of the dress. And then here is a drawing of all the pattern pieces. So, and you can see they're all numbered. They all have different numbers. And here are the labels of all the different numbers. These, this is a different language. So let's just pay attention to this right here. So number two looks like that is bodice front lining. And number one is continuous bias, which is a bias guide. Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I'm going, hmm. Okay, so what if I wanted to make this whole dress but I don't want the sleeves? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna circle everything but the sleeves. So it looks like I'll need the continuous bias guide. I'll need the bodice front, bodice left front, all of this stuff. I'll need all of these, except for anything that says sleeve because 
I have my own sleeve pattern that I'm going to use. Or if I want to use them, then I'll just use all of those and you'll use all of these numbers and you don't have to circle them. You just cut them all out. So, but for me, I want the hem facing because I'm going to do hem guide for ribbon skirt. So I want all of these. And these are the numbers that I'm going to be looking for on my tissue paper because they're all numbered. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's like numbers on there. And what's cool is you can see the numbers up here and make sure that they're the same, which they are. I've never seen a pattern where the numbers are mixed up. So also coming over here. Okay, so now we have our pieces that we're wanting to cut out. And so first you're gonna go, okay, fabric cutting layouts. So you'll see here's the directions for that. We're just gonna focus on this column right here. So starting at the top, um, see how there's different symbols. It'll say this symbol indicates bust line, waistline, hip line, or whatever lines okay so you'll want to read all of that it says okay so it says lines are cutting lines however five eighths seam allowances are included you'll want to read all of that it's very helpful information and then as this right here is a guide to how to read your fabric cutting layout so here's the right side of your pattern wrong side of your pattern right side of your fabric wrong side of your fabric so coming down here so this basically you'll see this is number 20 so you're coming over here and go oh number 20 is your skirt piece so which is your big rectangle right so that makes sense there's the big rectangle but it's dotted right so as you look up here it says wrong side of pattern so that means you want the wrong side of your pattern facing up so the back side of your pattern is facing up and then as you'll see here's the right side of pattern and you'll see these little white pieces here those are the right side of your pattern and you want that to be wrong side so you can see the different variation of what they have going on there so also going to the fabric and how to lay out the fabric so you have this gray color communicates right side of fabric this white communicates wrong side of fabric so that's interesting it looks like they have you cutting with right sides facing together and i marked these pieces here. So this right here is your selvage. These are your two selvages because if you actually look up here, it says double thickness. So it says with fold. So it says with fold, fold fabric right sides together. So that would make sense because I'm noticing that the gray is on the inside there. And this means that it's a double fold when you see that. And that's basically what that is right there. So, and it shows your grain line of, you want your grain line going with this way, which makes sense because your grain line goes along with the selvage that way. And so that's how you're going to lay out your fabric. You're gonna fold it. Selvage is meeting together at the end and you're gonna lay out your pieces the way they're showing you to do it here. And then you'll see here, this fold, these arrows, that means that if you see these arrows on your pattern piece, that means you're gonna cut that pattern piece on the fold. Like this 20, I think this has a fold on there. It's not showing it, but it shows on the pattern piece when we, I'll show you that in a minute. So yeah, you can go over these. After a while, when you start to get the hang of how commercial patterns go, you don't have to keep rereading these. You just know how to read it. It's like kind of learning a language. So also one thing you'll notice is that it has different sections of what you're cutting. So you have your dress. This is your fabric, your main fabric that you're doing for your dress. This is the contrast fabric and this is your lining fabric. And that's and they show you how to lay out each piece for each fabric, which is really helpful. Okay, so this is sewing information that you're gonna wanna know as you're going through sewing the dress together. So here at the top, it states very clearly that there's a five, a, Five eighths seam allowance included in all the pattern pieces like we mentioned before, unless otherwise indicated. So sometimes it'll say, sew this at a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. So that's an exception. And here it shows you the different, how it shows what side of the fabric and what fabric you're working with. So here's the right side of your fabric, wrong side. This means interfacing. So this dotted line means something different than over here because this is actually the sewing instructions, not your fabric layout instructions. So, and this means you're lining and this means underlining. So, and it tells you to press as you sew, press seams flat, which I would definitely promote that. So here are the different symbols of what these mean. Trim corners, notch out curves, clip inner curves, all that stuff. So that's what those things mean. You, you wanna do that when you have curves and things like that. Trim and close seams into layers. So it'll show you how to do all that. 
Um, it shows you what gather stitches mean, what a slip stitch means, and to reinforce. So you'll want to read those about what that means. And also, it shows you that you'll want to do this with your edges. I don't do that. I use a serger, but you can do that method if you want. So, and then here's your general instructions, and it shows all these different things. So here we see the word reinforce in bold letters, and here's the reference of what reinforcing means. And then here's your gray. So that means that's the right side of the fabric. Here's this right here. That means that's your lining and so forth. You'll see this is wrong side because white means wrong side. And you'll see that all the way throughout the whole pattern. All those different symbols and things like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up these pattern pieces just to give you an idea. I won't be cutting these out because I like to preserve my pattern pieces. So actually in the next video, I'll be showing you how I preserve my pattern pieces so that you don't have to keep, because if you cut your size out on here, you won't be able to have the other sizes for if you change size, you wanna make it for somebody else. But first things first, before I get into all of that. Here you have your number 15 and kind of remember that list of um, pattern pieces that we saw on the pattern instructions. That That's what this is. So this is your lower sleeve. I know we weren't doing sleeves, but just for an example. So here it shows these different lines and it points to each line as to what size those are. So that's a 10. And then it'll show, you'll wanna do that over there too on the other side. So you have, looks like the third line is a size 10. So if you go over here, you're gonna look at your third line over here. You're gonna see, okay, on my third line, that's a size 10. And so that's what you wanna cut out is that size all the way around. And you're gonna see these different symbols too. There's these different circles and your size 10 is your third one in. So you're gonna to wanna to mark the circle there, but be careful if you're doing it on your fabric. I put a little dot close to the edge of the seam because if you do it too far in, it's gonna show on your project. You'll see these two lines here and you're probably a little bit confused as what does that mean? This means that if you need a longer sleeve, you're gonna add it here. So that's what those two lines mean. This is your grain line, means you want it slightly on the bias. So you're gonna match this up with your, with your grain. This line is gonna go along with the grain of the fabric. So it's gonna be kind of diagonal on your material. And so as you're looking here, you'll see all these lines, placement line. This means for the sleeve gathers, and I'm pretty sure that's talking about these little guys here. So that's probably what it's talking about. You wanna place your gathers on those placement lines. So that's for the trim. And you'll want to cut out these notches too. So um, yeah, that's how that works. So I know that probably seemed really brief on how to read sewing patterns. However, I have another video out on how I actually cut out my pattern pieces. There's a way you can preserve your pattern pieces or your pattern, just your pattern in general so that you don't have to keep buying a new pattern. Um, so you won't want to miss it. So that's it for this video. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the second part and I will see you next time.